It was the bottom of the ninth inning with a 3-2 count. And although the Phillies had a 4-1 lead, this was no time to relax. One of the best hitters in the league, a former Rookie of the Year and a two-time batting champion, had worked a full count. There was much riding on this next pitch. Philadelphia Baseball History presents the defining moment in Rick Wise's career. We move on to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Rick Wise with a no-hit, no-run game going. Mugs, phone cases, t-shirts, and more all in our merch store. Celebrate your favorite player or team. Link in the description below. Protect your family with Philadelphia baseball-themed face masks. But the man on the mound had been preparing himself for this moment his entire life. Just 12 years earlier, he had led his team to the Little League World Series. And three years after that, he became only the second player to throw a no-hitter in the Babe Ruth League World Series. Major League scouts had shown interest in teenaged Rick Wise for quite some time. One scout had even put enormous pressure on his parents to sign a major league contract for their minor son right there on the spot, warning that if he had a bad game, his value would only decrease. In his next game, Wise struck out 22 batters in nine innings. So June 23rd, 1971, would prove to be a defining moment in Rick Wise's career. Three and two to Jimmy Stewart. And in that moment, Wise faced none other than the future hit king, Pete Rose. Pete Rose was batting leadoff that day, and the only reason that the Reds had reached his spot in the batting order was because back in the sixth inning, Rick Wise had walked Dave Concepcion. That, so far, was the only man who had reached base. But completing the no-hitter was not going to be a walk in the park. Wise was going to have to retire Pete Rose, who was 30 years old and in the prime of his career. And Rick Wise's performance was notable that day not only because of what he did on the mound, but also because of what he did at the plate. Wise had hit not one, but two home runs that day. The first being a two-run shot at the top of the fifth. His second home run was a solo round tripper that led off the top of the eighth. There's a well-hit ball, deep left field, that might go. It is a home run for Rick Wise's second of the game. Wise had provided a very important insurance run going into the late innings against a dangerous Cincinnati Reds team. And Pete Rose would not go down easy. He hit a line drive to the left side of the infield. But third baseman John Vukovic was playing just in the right spot. He snatched the line drive for the third out and to put the no-hitter into the books. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swing a line drive, he did it! Vukovic made the draw, Wise has done it! Rick Wise had pitched the first Phillies no-hitter since the famous Father's Day perfect game by Jim Bunning. Now fittingly, Wise happened to pitch the second game of that doubleheader on that Father's Day back in 1964. He had beaten the Mets 8-2 without giving up an earned run in his six innings pitched. But on June 21, 1971, Rick Wise became the first pitcher to hit two home runs in his own no-hitter. With pressure likely to be on the National League after this shortened season to keep the designated hitter, it's very likely that that record will continue to stand. Indeed, Wise had a remarkable season in 1971 offensively, and Wise would once again provide all the offense that the Phillies need to win a game that he pitched on August 28th. Wise was once again pitching the second game of a doubleheader. In the top of the fifth, the game was tied two apiece, and Wise came to the plate. He hit a solo home run that gave the Phillies a lead. By the top of the eighth inning, the game was again tied at three apiece. And this time, Wise broke the tie with a grand slam. Rick Wise was responsible for all the runs that the Phillies needed in their 7-3 victory. But Wise wasn't done yet. On September 18th, the Phillies played the Cubs. In the top of the second inning, Wise gave up a leadoff home run. He then proceeded to retire 32 Cubs in a row. In a feat unheard of in today's game, Rick Wise, the starting pitcher, continued to pitch into extra innings. And in the bottom of the 12th inning, 
the Cubs made the assumption that it was better to intentionally walk two batters in order to get to the pitcher spot. Rick Wise responded with a walk-off single that won the game for the Phils. All told, Rick Wise hit six home runs in 1971 and 15 in his entire career. And this includes six seasons where he pitched in the American League right after they adopted the designated hitter. In his seven seasons with the Phillies, Rick Wise had a record of 75 wins against 76 losses, just one win short of a 500 winning percentage. His ERA was a healthy 360, and he had amassed 717 strikeouts. Yet to many Phillies fans, Rick Wise will forever be the answer to the trivia question, who did the Phillies give up? in order to obtain Steve Carlton from the Cardinals. And at the time, despite the fact that he also played in seven seasons, Steve Carlton had only two more wins than Rick Wise. Plus, Carlton had the benefit of playing on a team that won two world championships. When Rick Wise played for the Phillies, they struggled to rise above fifth place in the six seasons following the 1964 disaster. And keep in mind the different economics of the sport in 1971. Mass free agency had not yet come to the league. So when Steve Carlton demanded a raise after the 1971 season, he didn't have the opportunity to test the market. Cardinals owner Gushy Bush demanded that Carlton be traded. And because the trade was a mandate, Every other team in the league drove a hard bargain, so Rick Wise was the best deal that the Cardinals could get. Nonetheless, Rick Wise played another 11 seasons. He ended up with a record of 188 wins to 181 losses, and his career ERA was a healthy 369, and Rick Wise was the winning pitcher in Game 6 of the 1975 World Series. A uh, plumber. In there, call strike three, right down the pipe, and Wise a game that many consider the best World Series game ever played. So while Rick Wise's career was not Hall of Fame caliber, he still managed to be a reliable pitching workhorse. And more than that, he was a pitcher who could do well with the bat. And when the trade that brought Steve Carlton to Philadelphia is viewed from the 1971 perspective, the trade is not as lopsided as it appears today. Don't forget to like, click, and subscribe. Please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Link in the description below. And we have a merch store. We have a variety of t-shirt designs available, plus mugs, phone cases, and face masks. Thank you so much for watching.